In today's episode, you guys are going to learn all about Python modules in depth and learn how you can create your own along the way and why they're useful to us. If you've tackled this before, or maybe you haven't and it's getting overwhelming, well don't worry, sit back and relax as I break down Python modules in an easy way. Welcome back guys to another episode of Code with Josh. If you're new here, you guessed it, I'm Josh. Do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe as that really helps me as a growing channel reach more students around the world. Well, you guessed it. In today's episode, I'm gonna break down Python modules and how we can create a modular organized code to one, create more efficient and cleaner code, but it's also gonna help you optimize your workflow and your coding along the way. Now, I'm not just going to teach us about how you can make your own modules. I want to scratch the surface with how you can also use built-in Python modules. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I know there are a lot of fun ones out there that you're eager to learn, like Flask for web development, or maybe Pandas for data analysis. Well, in the future, I'm going to get into those, all right? But baby steps, let's work on your foundations to get you where you need to be. If you're looking looking for a free handcrafted guide that you can use through your programming journey that has all of this information in one place. I've got you covered. It's the first link in the description. I've made you a handcrafted Python guide that I give to all my students on their first day of class. Head on down and grab yourself a copy along with my weekly Python newsletter and my podcast. First link in the description. Let's answer the first important question. Josh, what is a module? What are they? Well, all right, long story short, because that's what I do best, I break it all down for you. A module is like extra Python code in a different file that you can import or bring into your file and use it. It has pre-programmed functions, variables, classes, anything you want to store somewhere else you can keep it in a module, and then we bring it into your main file and you can use it. Now, this is week six. You may be thinking, wait, did I miss week four and five of the videos? No, you didn't, okay? I actually already have content out about this. Now, in week four, I want you to focus on data structures, and Python has four data structures. You can see here, I have a video out about it, lists and tuples, which is the first part of what you should be looking at, and then and additionally, I have dictionaries and sets. In total, these are two videos that I've already made for you guys that breaks down week four of what you should be learning. Going into week five, it's such a big topic. Week five is all about object-oriented programming. That's what makes Python really special. And because it was already so much, I have two videos out about this. The content's good, so why remake it? Here is the first video introducing you to classes and object-oriented programming, as well as the second video, which introduces classes and inheritance, how you can inherit other classes. Before this week, you might want to catch up on those. Head down and check out those videos now to get you caught up to speed. Now that we're in week six, we're on modules. Everything you've been learning the past four weeks you have done here. That's all we've done. You've only scratched the surface, but you need this strong foundation as you progress onward. Now, we want to use all these modules. Now, Python, there's so many modules. I only put four here. So calm down. You're not going to learn them all. All right. Let's just talk about what they are in their simplest form. You can see that there is a module called the random module. You could use this to work with random numbers. You may have heard of pandas. This is to work with data and data types. You may have heard of Pygame. Pygame is used to make 2D games in Python, as well as NumPy, which is an incredibly popular module for data analysis in Python. These are all frameworks, all extra Python code that's built for a specific task that we can import and use in your projects. You also see that three are orange, and I have this one as blue. Now, they're all modules, but the one in blue, Python actually has built-in modules that you still have to import, but you don't need to install onto your local system. And you can check out those. There's endless ones. You have math 
math, time, random, OS, there's more. And I'll show you a few today. The other ones you are going to have to install because they're meant for a specific task and they're pretty package heavy too, like these other three here. When it comes to getting a module in your project, you really have three different ways to do it. I have here one, two, and three. Okay? At the very top of our code, that's where you do all your imports, very top. The first thing you could do is you could say import the name of your module. That's fine, and this connects the entire module, but you still need to state which module the function is from when you're using a function from that module. So for example, random has a function called randit. Now this just gives you a random integer between two numbers. It's a computer giving you a random number. If I import like this, then I, I still have to say random.randon because randon is from the random library. Now this is great for when you're learning a new library or you're working with a really large module. The next way we could import is maybe I could import only a single function from the module random. That way I'm not getting everything, it's optimizing my code and I'm taking just what I need. If I do it like this, you can see that I just use random alone. Well, that's spelled incorrectly, spelling mistake, but I don't need to state the library anymore. I can just use the function. This is great for when you're working with really large frameworks. You can import individual functions or classes and use them. The last thing, and honestly my favorite one, but be careful, is you could say from random import star. Now literally, Star means everything. You'll see this in coding, in SQL, you'll see it. This literally translates from the random module import absolutely everything. Cool, now you have access to everything in the random module. You can use this the same way as you did before. This is the most popular way, as it's the easiest, but be careful. You don't wanna use this with big libraries, big modules. It's gonna break your code, it's gonna get confused. That's why you have to be very careful with this. Random is an easy one, math is an easy one. Most of the built-in Python modules, you can import star. Anything else? Caution. I've talked about random, but now I want to talk to you about you can create your own modules to organize your functions. How can we do that and what does that look like? Alright, so imagine we have two files. I have a Python file called subscribe.py because if you're not subscribed, you should be. And in here, I have just three incredibly basic functions. I'm not calling these functions, no. I'm just defining my functions. I made functions, I'm keeping them here. This allows for cleaner and more readable code. Now in your main Python file, I'm gonna import everything from my subscribe module. From the subscribe module, import everything. Now I'm getting three inputs and then I am calling the functions that I defined in the other module. I don't have to define them in your main code, it's saving space. That's what I want us to focus on today. All right, I'm gonna take you into VS Code and we're gonna play around with creating your own modules. I'll give you a few examples and I'll show you how you could use random through a module of your own. Now that we're in VS Code, let's create your first module. Now remember, a module is just extra code that you keep somewhere else that you can use in your main project. So here in VS Code, I'm gonna go up here, I'm in my main Python file. I'm gonna create a new file. Let's call this my functions. Be specific, there we are. I have two files now, a main file and my functions. Here in my functions file, I'm gonna create, let's start with one function, and I wanna use that in my main file. I just wanna keep all the functions I create in this new file. So here, let's say we want to make a function that's going to remove the vowels from a word. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Maybe it's like you're trying to speak a secret language or something. If that floats your boat, cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, great. Remove vowels. Let's say there's an input string here. I'm going to give it a string, and I want to remove the vowels from that. So I could create a variable like my vowels, and we could say this is A-E-I-O-U, and just in case A-E-I-O-U. 
all my vowels lowercase and uppercase. And let's say we have a result. Okay, initially it's nothing. I don't have a string yet. I'm gonna say for every character, or let's say for every letter, but it's not just a letter, because it could be a space, right? It's a single string. So for every letter in my input string parameter, right? If that current letter I'm in is not in my variable vowels, then that's cool. I'm gonna take my results and I would like to add that letter to it or whatever that was. Finally, I can return my response. I can return the results. This is a new string that was created and it has all the vowels removed. Everything else stays the same. Great. I have my function, it's done. It's in my my functions Python file. I'm gonna head back to our file here and I'm gonna import that. So I'm gonna say, hey, I'll just do it the first way. I'm gonna say import my functions. That's my module we made, okay? I'm not importing everything, although I could. I just wanna show you import module. So coming over here now, I would like to use my function. So let's say like word. And the word is gonna be equal to me calling my function. So remember, I have a function from my functions and it's called remove vowels. I'm using it like that, it takes a string. So maybe I could uh, collect a string here. String equals input, enter a string. And then I'm gonna pass that right in here as our input string. You can then print off to see your function in action word. Let's give it a try. Enter a string, I'm gonna say, there was a big airplane outside. Enter. Ha, <laughs> there you are. All the vowels were removed, and my function is held in my module. It makes our code much more readable. That's amazing. All right, let me expand on that. Going back to my functions, let's say we wanna make another super basic function. Let's say, uh, let's call it remove duplicates, or I wanna get rid of all the duplicate values of something. So like, uh, del duplicates. I wanna delete the duplicates. And what this is gonna take is it's gonna take a list, right? Because I wanna remove the duplicates of a list. All we have to do for this, if you watch the data structures video, which I've taught about right here, we're gonna use a set to do this. Here, I'm gonna return a new list, but I want each element to be from the set. Now, the set is gonna be my input list. Why am I using a set? Well, from the video, a set removes all the duplicate values of something. So, that's why I'm using it here. On the outside back in my main file now, I could come down here, right? And let's say I'm gonna enter a bunch of numbers, right? So maybe I could say numbers equals uh, inputs. So I'm gonna create a list from that. And I'm just gonna split those like that, okay? Uh, what I wanna do then is I want to remove all the duplicates. So I'm gonna now import a little different. Let's go up here and let's say from my functions import everything, right? That's the other way to do it. You can see I'm getting an error here. That's because I don't need this anymore. I can just delete that. So I'm gonna now use my function delete duplicates and I'm gonna give it my list of numbers which is right here. I just made that using split. Remember, we talked about lists in my data structures video. Head back and check those out if you're looking for more content on that. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna print off, and I'm just gonna print off my new list, essentially, of any duplicates removed. Here we are, enter numbers with a space. So I'm gonna do like uh, one space, two space. You can see that I have some duplicates there. Um, I have some twos, I have more ones, two sixes. I'm gonna click enter. There we are. Now I have a list returned to me with all the duplicates removed because I made it to a set, then back to a list. And these are still technically strings. They're not numbers, right? They're not ordered yet, but you could do that. That's amazing. All right, I wanna show you guys one more really cool thing. The way I can use modules is, is I could import a module to my module and use it in our main file. Once again, this helps with readability in your organized code base. So let's say, let me close this. In my functions, 
Let's say that I want to get back a random number as well. I don't know why I'm doing it here, but just for this sake. Let's say I'm going to create a variable called random number, and this will be equal to a random number. How do we use a random number? Well, a Python built-in module is called random. I'm going to use that. You should look up some of these modules too to help your process. At the top, I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to say from random import star. Please keep in mind I am in my module, I'm not in the main file, but I'm importing this to my module. Here I'm going to use the function random. I'm going to get a random number between like 1 and 1000. And I also want to return that number. So currently I'm returning a single item. But I'm going to return two items. To do this, I'm going to put those return values in a tuple. Josh, tuple. Did you miss the data structure video? Go watch it if you did. A tuple is an immutable data structure that works like a list. So I'm going to make a tuple. I'm going to say, just put that in parentheses. Okay, that was the first value. The second value I'd like to return is my random number, like that. Let's go back onto our main file. So now in the main file, the same thing, but now I don't just have remove. Remove is holding two things because it's a tuple. So I'm going to say remove, and I want the first item from my tuple, zero. I'm going to print off, and I'm going to say remove, and I want the second item from my tuple. All right, let's run the code again. Here we go, enter numbers, let's enter a bunch of numbers. There you are, my list of numbers, but it's also using the random module 425, right? I imported that to my module and I returned the values in a tuple. Now I'm accessing that tuple to get the value from that imported module. That's incredible, let me show you. There we are. That's incredible. You guys now have been introduced to how modules are and I hope that I've broken it down for you in the best way possible. Guys, I actually have courses out on this to help guide you through your journey. It's the link in the description. I have three courses, whether you're a beginner or more intermediate looking for advanced projects. I believe in project-based learning and that's what my courses are surrounded in. Remember, smash the subscribe button and hit the like button as that helps me reach more students around around the world. And if you're looking for a free Python guide, maybe you're not ready for a course yet, but a free Python guide that I've made for you is the first link in the description. Head on down there and grab yourself a free copy. To wrap up today, we've explored how you can create your own modules and I've shown you some real world scenarios. I also went a bit advanced there. I returned a few things in a tuple and I imported a built-in Python module in my module. That's amazing. Remember, a module creates a more readable, a more structured code base for you, keeping all your extra material in a different file and keeping your main file nice, clean, and readable. Well, that's all for today's episode. Episode. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Code with Josh, and I can't wait to see you in next week's episode. Until then.